The following program is sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life. Are you happy? Are you excited? Are you joyful? Do you have godly anticipation? If you don't have those things, it's because you're not doing what he created you to do. Hands down. Because when you're doing, when you find out what it is he wants you to do and you do it, the world can fall out from underneath you and you will be happy, you will be joyful, and you will be full. I can't imagine going through life without that assurance. Some say they know God, but today Jack Hibbs asks the question, are you sure God knows you? Fearful of becoming a victim of the cancel culture movement? Frustrated to feel you can't assert biblical truth without facing condemnation? When you want to speak up but aren't sure what to say? We Will Not Be Silenced, a book by Erwin Lutzer, unravels the complex threats faced by Christians in a society that has weaponized race, gender, sexuality, and more to divide individuals and undermine freedom. Order your copy now and gain a better understanding of non-believers' legitimate hurts, concerns, and identify the toxic responses secular culture disguises as solutions. Learn how you can show compassion and gentleness to those outside of the faith without affirming their beliefs. Go to jackkibbs.com to order your copy for a gift of any amount. Or if you prefer, call 877-777-2346. We will not be silenced. Order now. Well, the question always comes up regarding who do you know, right? Who do you know? Do they know you? It's just part of human nature. It's part of who we are. Many times in life, and I have to say this is true, certainly in spiritual context, is this. We say that we know God, but the question is, does God know us? Does God know you? Many times in life, we will find out that it's not so much what you know, but it's who you know. Maybe that job has come up before you and, and you're excited about it and you're, and you're pursuing it, but you hear that it's gone to somebody else and that somebody else happened to know the owner or to know the boss and the boss knew them. I know it doesn't seem fair in life because we can always make ourselves more qualified for a position, but it is certainly true regarding spiritual matters. The fact is, regarding heaven, does God know you? It's not what you know in theological terms. It's who you know. And Jesus Christ said that he was the way, the truth, and the life. He's going to stress in our message today those definite articles that precede those attributes of who he is. He is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. That means that there is no other way, that there's no other truth, that there's no other life that will get you and I into heaven. It's Jesus, it's him alone. So friends, as we get into this and as we consider God's path for you and I to enter eternity, remember this, you may be a theologian, it doesn't matter to God. You may be religious, doesn't matter to him. You may come from a long line of great preachers and teachers of the Bible, doesn't matter. It's not what you know, it's who you know. And the question is, does he know you? Does the God of the Bible know you personally? Because if he does, the Bible answers that dynamic by saying he knows his sheep and his sheep know him. Are you one of his own? That's the key question. And that's what I want you to do right now is to find that out for your own life. So grab your Bible. Here we go.
God's glory is revealed to you when he knows you. That's why Bible study only takes you halfway. Because once you study a verse of the Bible, then God says, okay, now go do it. The Bible tells us, and I love this, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 10, verse 18, and Jesus said to them, this is the disciples, now they're growing. It went from 12 to 70 of them. I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. That's a great thing. So what are you saying that for, Jesus? Behold, I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Um, This would have been a great theme verse for 2020. (laughs) Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits or the demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Jesus says, now go and preach the gospel. Okay, here we go. And you preach the gospel. And communities are getting saved. Miracles are happening and demons are running away from you. And you go back to Jesus and you say, it works. It works. Your gospel works. Wow, that was amazing. We not only know you, but while we were away from you preaching and ministering, we discovered that you know us. And Jesus says, that's very, very cool. But listen, remember this. Best thing of all, rejoice not in that, but in the fact that your names are written down in heaven. Your names. Is your name written down in heaven? Number three, make sure you're being faithful. We don't need to belabor this, just challenge you on this. Be faithful. He's coming for you, so make sure that you're being faithful. The word faithful means being reliable to what God has called you to do. It means that he can trust you with what he's given you to do. This is beautifully liberating, friend. You, 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 not the person next to you, you, specifically you. Think about it, as as unique as a snowflake is. You know, I believe people when they say that. I've never looked at a snowflake. I'm told every one of them's different. Okay, I haven't looked, so I'll, I'll go with the science on that if that's science. And the Hallmark card says, you're as unique as a snowflake. <laughs> okay, I, I know that's true. You are unique. Here's the thing. God is saying to you, whoever you are, who you know me and I know you, be faithful to why I gave you life. See, when we're unfaithful, I don't mean this in any other way except, I'm gonna, uh, this is life. I, this is my life. I want to I wanna do this. I want to do that. I want to... I wanna, do my thing. It's not necessarily something, in fact, let me put it to you this way. It's not necessarily something evil that they're saying. They don't know anything. They're they're non-Christians. They don't know. And they're trying, look, let's be honest. They're doing the best they can to make their life mean something, right? Why do people have uh, sexual exploits or uh, uh, drug-induced events or uh, power grabbing, and and why do they do that? Because they're trying to find meaning. Don't be so mean to them, because you used to be just like them. Have we forgotten that he's rescued us from this? We need to be gentle and kind and loving, and we need to reach out to them. Pray first, and then reach out to them. The truth is, they're trying to get what you have, or they're trying to get what Jesus gives for free. They don't know that, so they're trying to figure out, how do I fill this void in my life? They're not necessarily the spawn of Satan. They just may not know Jesus. And we can so focus down, oh, look at what you're doing, look what you're doing. Look, I've told you before, church, when, a, when somebody I don't know walks up and says, hi, I'm a Christian, I, I'm in my mind, I go, hey, nice to meet you. In my mind, I'm going, oh, boy. <laughs> what do we got here? Because you don't know, I don't know. They have named a name. They put themselves in a category. Are they in pursuit of Christ? Are they in submission to his word? If somebody comes up and says, hey, I'm a full-blown atheist, well, I can relax. (laughs) Are you with me? I don't expect anything from them. If they say, hey, you know what? I'm a full-blown atheist, and I was thinking about going over there and, and doing this and doing that, and of course you were. 
That's what, that's what I used to do before I, I was a follower. Right? You're going to be faithful to something or to someone. Jesus says, be faithful to me. Be faithful to me. God has given each of you something to do in this life for his glory. You are to find out what it is. And when you find it, run with it. God made you for a purpose. Listen, don't don't respond out loud. Are you happy? Are you excited? Are you joyful? Do you have godly anticipation? If you don't have those things, it's because you're not doing what he created you to do. Hands down. Because when you're doing, when you find out what it is he wants you to do and you do it, the world can fall out from underneath you and you will be happy, you will be joyful, and you will be full. I can't imagine going through life without that assurance. So find out what that is. In Matthew 6, the Bible says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. So the kingdom of God, this is fun. It's two things. Number one, seek first the kingdom. That's his politics. That's what it means. Seek first the politics of Jesus. What is that? He's king. King Jesus. John Adams always called Jesus King Jesus. I like that. King Jesus. That's right. He's king. But do, listen, what if, when, when kings say things, you do them. Right? Isn't it great that the Bible reveals to us that Jesus is king? It doesn't reveal him in any, it doesn't reveal him as president or senator or congress or prime minister king. I like that. See, I like that cuz I like his politics. His politics is love. His politics is joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, self-control, the fruit of the spirit. That's his politics. And this is how we confirm that our faith is correct and that we are knowing him and that we're on the right path is that we're ready for him. This is so important, yet so easily missed. If we're on the right path and we believe what his word says and that he's coming back for us and we don't know when, it could be at any time. How do I maintain this? To be ready for him. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 says, examine yourselves to see or to determine whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Isn't that awesome? uh, The word, listen, the word examine means this, to uh, put yourself through the test. (laughs) Watch, it's to put yourself through the test. The word means to challenge your authenticity. Um, If you've ever been, and if you've never been, I encourage you to go. It's absolutely amazing. Go to Bodie, California. You ever heard of Bodie? How many of you have been to Bodie? Raise your hands. Oh, wow. Well, those of you who haven't, you got to go. Bodie, California. Uh, Northern California, just east of the 395. It's it's way up there. It's like 8,300 feet high, so dress warm. In that location, by the way, everything's still standing. Everything's still standing. There's even letters and there's even at the assayer's office, this is my point, at the assayer's office, when you took your gold, you took it to the assayer's office and you put in they, the guides. It's all still there. You can read it. There's been there since like 1849, 1853. The guy brought in, like, uh, by the way, true. Um, I forget his first name, but Mr. Levi and Mr. Strauss. Yep, that's where they, that's where they really? lived. Wow. They moved from San Francisco to Bodie. Why? Because people at Bodie, working at Bodie, they, be, they were the richest people on earth at that time. Bodie was producing more millionaires per week than any other place ever in human history for mining gold. It was so prolific that They didn't have wheelbarrows, so some guy invented a wheelbarrow that would work a lot better than what the carts that they were using. Do you know what the guy's name was? Studebaker. (laughs) Pants were wearing out because they were made of cotton, and so two guys, 
two Jewish guys moved from San Francisco, gave up their careers, and they went to go mine for gold. And they, this has nothing to do with the Bible study. <laughs> they were mining for gold, and they wore their pants out so fast that they went back to San Francisco and invented denim. And they're called Levi Strauss, Levi's today. Zippers wouldn't work right, so they did button-ups. Levi Strauss. Then they kept breaking tools. They were finding so much gold, they were wearing out tools, pants and wheelbarrows. So some guy, listen, some guy talked to his friend about, we need to, we need to figure out how to build a new shovel, a different kind of shovel. And if we only had a thing like this, it would help a lot. What do you think, Mr. Roebuck? Well, I think we should do this, Mr. Sears. <laughs> Bodie, California. Why did I bring that up? Someone help me. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, when you found gold, you took it to the assayer's office and they poured acid on it. And the acid washed everything away that wasn't gold. And the gold just became brilliant. And they said, congratulations. That's one nugget you have there. That's tremendous. The Bible says examine yourselves. Pour the acid. Look, pour the acid on my life. See what's real. No one can do that except you. The believer in Christ Jesus will do this to themselves. They will look at themselves and they will say, when he comes, is he coming for me? I want to make sure, because I'm going to pour the acid of his word on my life to see what needs to be washed away, and I'm willing to see what's true and let it stand. That takes faith, friend, Amen. in him. Amen. Because you're willing to get that report card from him. You'll be ready. We don't have to, we don't have to worry much at all about anything regarding his coming if you examine yourself. And then we end right here. Make sure that you're found by him. And I'll just end with this. I wish I had the time, but to be found by him. I did a little bit of study on sheep and goats. You know, goats will not follow easily, or if at all, the shepherd's voice. You know, goats are independent. They do their own thing. Did you know that goats will eat anything that's in front of them if they want to? You know, they're very... Uh, non-selective, non, non-critical about what they consume. Let me read this to you. One of the many differences between sheep and goats is how they eat. Sheep are grazers. They ramble slowly among particular plants close to the ground. Goats, on the other hand, are browsers. <laughs> browsers. Internet. Internet browsers. <laughs> they... They look for almost anything. When leaves, twigs, vines, and scrubs are not on the menu, they will consume just about anything that is convenient. Contrary, sheep are slow, methodical eaters, while goats can be agile in the pursuit of food and indiscriminate with their diet. Jesus said, you're either sheep or a goat. Listen, sheep, sheep have to be fed by the shepherd or they have to be eating under the shepherd's approval of a field or a hillside scientifically factual sheep prove scientifically that God is the creator because evolution could never be true because we know that sheep cannot exist without a human being did you know that sheep cannot live without humans They'll die. And just that argument alone debunks evolution because you couldn't have had sheep before humans. You can only have sheep because of a shepherd. A goat, on the other hand, they'll eat your purse. <laughs> they'll eat your wallet. But when you're found by him, it means this. It means... That he knows you by name. That he knows you by name, my friend. And the tragic thing would be that at the end, can you imagine? You, you, you die. Listen, in fact, I wrote this down. It sounds kind of terrifying, right? Watch this. This is what I wrote. As I look across the sanctuary, 
I see that every single one of you will be meeting Jesus Christ in person in just a few years. Think of it. You say, I don't know if I like the way that sounds. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Because even if you live to be 100, it's only a few years compared to eternity. So it's true. As I look across this sanctuary, every single one of you will be meeting Jesus Christ personally. And so you want to make sure when he, when he sees you, will he see you with, his, with your name tag on? <laughs> hey, I know you. Can you imagine being in line what, and you're going, up to the, you're going up to the gates there and there's Peter, he's got a little clipboard. I don't know where we got that from. It's not in the Bible. <laughs> but can you imagine, you, what's your name? I had, a, I had a name tag in life. I don't know where my name tag is. I had it when I was living. Hmm. We'll see what happens when we get up there. But you look around and there's other people with name tags. Can you imagine? Mike, come on in. Welcome. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Jack, come on in. What's your name? Um, Fred. Well, how do I know? It's Fred. There's no Fred here. Where's your name tag? I don't have one. I had one in life. But I noticed as soon as I died, I didn't have one. I'm sorry. You can't come in. Jesus gives you that name tag. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, he will give you a new name. I'm really glad about that. I'm done with Jack. I'm tired of it. <laughs> let's, let, listen, let's pray right now. But listen. How do you, are you going? Listen, you, he's coming for you. You will enter eternity in the next few years. What are you going to do about that? So listen, um, it's like you and I going into a room. Maybe we've been invited to a conference or some gala. And uh, we come on in and we've got a name tag. And uh, the host will look for you and the host will see the name tag and respond to you. And, and that's pretty cool, right? But do you know what's better than that? Going to an amazing banquet and you don't need a name tag because the host walks in and says, Jack, I've been waiting for you. Jack, come on, welcome. And you think about what heaven is going to be like because the Bible tells us that the shepherd of our souls, that he's going to greet us. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts that when Stephen was being stoned to death in Jerusalem, that when he looked up, he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God the Father to receive him. My dear friend, if Jesus knows you, he's gonna receive you. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they follow me. In this day and age of deception and all the false teaching that's going on in the world around us, what is your assurance? Your assurance is this. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and a stranger they will not follow. That's the assurance that you can have today as a believer. You don't have to wait until your moment of death to figure out if you're gonna to go to heaven or not. The Bible says these things have been written that you might know you have eternal life, the word of God. And so the question is to you, do you know Jesus Christ personally? Do you recognize his voice? Are you following him? Because listen, all those who are his, he knows them. The question is, do you know him? Do you know the lover of your soul? Well, listen, I pray that you do. In fact, to know that and to know his voice is to know his word. If you reach out and contact us at jackgibbs.com, we want to send you a Bible so that you can get started in your own walk with Jesus. And by reading the Bible, you'll recognize the voice of God. That's how he speaks. Fearful of becoming a victim of the cancel culture movement? Frustrated to feel you can't assert biblical truth without facing condemnation? When you want to speak up but aren't sure what to say? We Will Not Be Silenced, a book by Erwin Lutzer, unravels the complex threats faced by Christians in a society that has weaponized race, gender, sexuality, and more to divide individuals and undermine freedom. Order your copy now 
and gain a better understanding of non-believers legitimate hurts, concerns, and identify the toxic responses secular culture disguises as solutions. Learn how you can show compassion and gentleness to those outside of the faith without affirming their beliefs. Go to jackhibbs.com to order your copy for a gift of any amount. Or if you prefer, call 877-777-2346. We will not be silenced. Order now. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effect. So I want to encourage you to grab your Bibles, open them up, and get ready to learn from God's Word. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. But I think you're going to get a lot out of it, and one of the great reasons You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? By the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get excited about what Jesus Christ wants to do in and through you. Well, this is what you can expect right here on Real Life. The gospel, unfiltered, truthful, honest, and can I put it this way? even raw. Christ has the answers for you and they're found in his Bible. That is developing a worldview. That's what we call it, a biblical worldview. Because God's got the answers and God has shown us the way and that way is Jesus Christ. He has a plan for your life personally. Here's what we want you to do. We want you to set your DVR to this program. We want you to stay connected with us and we want you to be expectant that God is gonna work in your life. Tell a friend. We would love to have you and others join us right back here on Real Life. Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways. We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Hibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life. The preceding program was sponsored by generous friends and partners of Real Life.